Good morning, my friends. I'm so glad to be with you today. Thanks for joining me as we look at God's Word together in the Unfolding the Word ministry. We're in the midst of a study of 1 John. We're in the third chapter now, and over the last several days, we've been looking at a portion of that chapter given over to the issue of the changes that occur as a result of our new birth in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to read now verses 7 to 10, which is essentially what we've been looking at together. Listen as I read it. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous as he is righteous. Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil. For the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning, for God's sin of seed abides in him, and he cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God. And by this it's evident who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is the one who does not love his brother. <laughs> As I say, we've been looking at the issue of the changes that occur in the life of an individual who has truly come to know Christ as Savior. When we are born anew, we are changed as people. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away. Everything has become new. That is the reality. We are fundamentally changed as people at the deepest level of our life. Fundamentally changed. And one of the expressions of that change is that those who have come to know Christ desire to grow to be like Christ. They desire to live like Christ. Fundamental to the transformation that God has accomplished is an inclination toward growth. Romans 7 puts it, uh, within our heart we have the desire to please the Lord, but we see another work, law at work in the members of our body. So fundamentally there's been a change within we still stumble at times, as John made plain under direction of the Holy Spirit back at the end of the first chapter and into the beginning of the second chapter. But nonetheless, despite stumbling, our goal is growth. Our lifestyle is one now of a practice of righteousness rather than a practice of sinning. The habitual orientation of life is what we're talking about. And remember, the issue of sin, as we've seen earlier in the third chapter, is less a moral question, although there are implications there, that has more to do with who's running our life. Are we living according to what's right in our own eyes, therefore being the master of our life, or are we living according to what's right in God's eyes, surrendered to his purpose and plan? Satan is our great enemy in this process. He tries to keep us from growing. He tries to deceive us about many things about growth. And Jesus Christ, it told us in these verses I read to you, came to destroy the works of the devil in verse 8. We looked yesterday at the first way in which that destruction occurred. And that was that the work of the devil, and the work of the devil, by the way, is to keep people from God, to keep them lost and if they've been found to keep them so confused they don't grow. At any rate, the work of the devil was, was destroyed because of the cross and the resurrection. What Jesus Christ did on the cross for us solved the unsolvable, the impossible dilemma of accountability for our sin, that sin which separated everyone from God because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Christ came into this world was born, lived, and then died on our behalf, raised from the dead, ascended into heaven, and eventually will return to this earth. The works of the devil were destroyed through the cross and the resurrection. In verse 9, we see, No one born of God makes a practice of sinning, for God's seed abides in him. He cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God. The second way in which the works of the devil are destroyed, overcome, set aside, is by the reality of the new birth itself, which is kind of the broad theme here. Repentance and faith in the gospel leads to a new birth. 
we become born anew, as John chapter 3 puts it, and we become new creations, as 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that I already quoted to you, puts it. The point of it all is that in response to repentance and faith, God transforms those who place their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He already, under this first issue of the cross and the resurrection, he delivers us from the accountability of our sin, which is a wonderful, wonderful outcome. But now we're learning that he also delivers us from the captivity of sin, because the new birth fundamentally changes the equation of our life. Let's pick this up a little bit further. He tells us here that this new birth in our life involved the planting of God's seed within us. The word seed, as we encounter it in verse 9, uh, is the Greek word sperma. Uh, think of seed in the sense of a garden variety seed. Uh, you know, you plant the bean seed in the ground, a bean plant emerges. God has planted a sperma in us, the new nature the new seed of the new nature has been planted in us when we repent and believe. And that seed sprouts. Uh, that seed that God supernaturally has planted sprouts. It causes new birth. It causes, like a seed coming out of the ground, it causes the inclination, the desire to please God and to grow. It fosters this desire for righteousness. Yes, we still stumble at times. We still choose in rebellion to live contrary to that inclination. But brothers and sisters, the inclination is there because the seed is sprouted. God planted it and did it in response to our repentance and faith. And as a result of that, we are changed people. All true believers are sprouted seed. Let me repeat that. All true believers are sprouted seed. Once a seed sprouts, it can't unsprout. Things can happen to keep the seed, the plant that comes out of the seed, from producing fruit, of course. But you can't unsprout something that's been sprouted as far as a seed is concerned. Those who have truly come to know Christ have a sprouted seed that God has planted. And that plant that emerges is the new life in Christ. It is the heart desire to please God, to want to grow. The speed of our growth is tied to our surrender, our continued surrender, our obedience, our dependency upon the Holy Spirit and other factors. But the reality of it being sprouted is a fundamental reality of new life in Christ. Regardless of the speed of the growth, growth is a reality and a desire to grow is the characteristic of the believer. Now, the line of argument here in verse 9 is this. If the new birth has now been a sprouted seed from God within us, it makes habitual sinning now impossible. We cannot habitually live in rebellion against God if God has fundamentally changed the deepest level of our life. Now, at times, we can make choices to go against that inner man. We can go against that new heart. But we're still going against what is now true of us. We will not make a practice of sinning, an orientation of life, if we've come to know Christ. <laughs> it says, in fact, we cannot keep on the old way. Dunatai is the Greek word here, meaning you're not able to do something. We can certainly still stumble. We can certainly still uh, confront and not always align with the inner new man that we've become. But nonetheless, the deepest desire of our heart, this sprouted seed, is to be who God wants us to be. And here's the point, brothers and sisters. The most miserable people in the world are redeemed believers who spend their time fighting the deepest inclination of their life. When they fight it and instead choose sin, the believer is much more filled with grief and unhappiness and guilt than the unbeliever is. <laughs> and all of that is meant to lead us 
toward deciding I'm going to follow the Lord. I'm going to grow. I'm going to do this. All of it helps to break the stranglehold of sin and the deception of the enemy in our life. Over time, God has worked this miracle to sprout the seed. You are changed if you know Christ as Savior. Your call is to align with your heart, the new man that you've become in Christ, drawing on God's grace and enablement through the Holy Spirit. Do not align with who you once were. Do not align with the old man, the sin that's there. Align with the sprouted seed. You've been fundamentally changed. Well, join me tomorrow as we continue in our study as we will discover that the habitual orientation of life becomes a clear picture of the family we really belong to. God bless.